Hi, let me demonstrate how you can get, import and configure the realistic granite materials pack for Blender 2.8, so you too can quickly and easily integrate it into your scenes. Step 1. Get the material pack. Go to blendermarket.com slash creators slash crisp or simply visit crispy.zone or click the link in the video description. There you can find and purchase the granite materials pack and some other materials you might also like, by the way. Also note that a portion of the cost directly goes to the Blender Development Fund to support the great team at the Blender Foundation. Step two, after you have purchased and downloaded the crispgranite.blend file, open Blender 2.8, Open the scene you wish to use the granite material in, or simply start with a new scene. Then go to File, Link, pick the downloaded blend file, open Node Tree, hit A on the keyboard to select All and click the Link from Library button. Now select the object, give it a new material, you can delete the default principal shader, hit Shift A, Group, Crispy Granite A or B. Duplicate the material output node and set one to cycles and the other one to EV. And connect the cycles output to the cycles material output node and the EV output to the EV material output node and the displacement output to both. Now let's see what we can do with these granite materials. You have already seen that there are two different granite types in this pack. Granite A defaults to this grey stone with a little bit of blue quartz and brown mica. But you can tune or completely change the colors with these properties right here. Sometimes granite comes in more brown or more bluish tones. Sometimes it is just generally grey. So whatever type of granite you need for your scene you can tweak the colors here. Taking a closer look at the surface, here we can see all the details this procedural material node creates for us based on the colors we set. Now let's look at the other settings of this node. You can use the vector and normal inputs just like with other shader nodes. For example, if I want to change the scale of the granite texture, I would use a texture coordinate and a mapping node and set the scale values. Of course, you can use UV maps and all the other features in Blender. Here I'm adding a tiny bevel using the normal input, or you can plug in bump or normal maps the way you usually would. Using the roughness value I can create either a polished granite or a raw stone surface. To add some imperfections I can turn up the pit slider, which can add more interesting details in realism, especially on a polished material. The crystal slider on the other hand can create some bright reflective flecks, which look good on raw rough granite. The raw stone displacement value is a little bonus for you to quickly add realistic displacement to the granite material, which works very well in cycles when you switch on experimental features, set the surface displacement to displacement and bump in the material settings, and add a subdivision modifier with the adaptive checkbox enabled to the bottom of your modifier stack. A different type of granite is what's called Meissner granite. This stone is sort of a peachy pink color with dark gray and reddish quartz inclusions. But it not only differs in color, the texture is also very different. And that's what the second shader in this pack is for. So here I add the crispy granite B node and hook it up. By the way, this shader needs to have texture coordinates plugged in for it to work properly. Looking closely I can see that this granite has a very different structure, less swirly but instead rather cell structured. We can also see those brighter veins here and there which are very similar to marble I guess. So this granite B material node not only gives us nice default colors for this red stone but also takes care of these special texture patterns and those brighter veins. The other settings here work the same as with the granite A node we have already seen. Looking at reference images online you will quickly realize that there are infinite size and color variations of granite. But I think with these two shaders it is possible to create very good looking results quickly and easily. 
for all sorts of use cases, like architectural renderings, for example. Note that these two materials are 100% procedural. This means you can scale the textures to whatever size you want and will never see any tiling artifacts, like you would with image-based materials. And you also don't need to UV unwrap your model. If you decide to purchase this material pack, or if you already have, then thank you very much for your support. I hope you enjoy using these shaders as much as I enjoyed creating them. And please, if you make something cool, I would love to see your results. So please drop me a note on one of my socials. Thanks for watching. Chris P. Out.